Hello and welcome back for another special VMK in the game development series. We're going to be implementing this dynamic list box uh, that, I, that you can see here. Uh, this is the list box, here's just the button on the very bottom. Um, what you, you can do is you can populate this list box with any number of rows that you like. Here I just have nine rows. And uh, in, on each row you can specify how many columns of data there's going to be. Here I've selected to have two columns, so I have this column here and this column here. Each column can have its own color code, so I've designated the gray text to be the first column and the yellow text to be the second column. And you can also specify, you know, what is this texture that you like to have for the outside area, as well as what color would you like for the selected items. All of this is perfectly customizable through the constructor of our new GUI control. And this GUI control I call GUI list. Now the other feature that I added in here is uh, there's going to be a scroll bar that appears if the list that you place inside of this list box is long enough such that it goes beyond the bottom point here. Let me show you what that looks like. So what I can do is uh, go inside of the code here and change this instead of being a 10, let's make it uh, 24. So we will have 23 rows of data inside of our list box. We'll just recompile this and uh, give it a run. Now the GUI list box knows that there's more data uh, in here that I can show, so it automatically generates this uh, scroll bar on the side. And the scroll bar, we can see we can grab and scroll it down and up, uh, as well as when we scroll we can go in and select any items as well. Uh, any items that's selected is scrolled appropriately, uh, so all of that is handled automatically for us. I've also implemented these little buttons at the bottom and top, and you'll notice that as I highlight over top of them, they sort of depress, you can see that, uh, as well as when I click on them, you can just make the scroll uh, item move one item at a time, as opposed to clicking on the scroll bar here and actually scrolling it with your mouse. So you have that option as to how you want to uh, move through your data items. So this is the GUI control that we'll be implementing in this VMK. Um, it is a little bit of work, but we can leverage a number of items. We already have the base class GUI control that we use, and these items here are GUI buttons, so we're going to encapsulate two GUI buttons inside of our list box, as well as a GUI scroll bar. And the GUI scroll bar is actually um, going to be implemented using the existing GUI scroll bar that we've already created. So we're just going to reuse a lot of code that we already have. But we will implement all the functionality to allow us to select items as well as uh, be able to change items out uh, if we need to. Once we implement this, then we can go in and create this mystical new game state that I've been telling you guys all about. So let's get started in the code. The first thing we're going to have to do is modify our GUI slider class because currently it's not behaving the way we're going to need it to when we implement our GUI list box. Uh, let me show you why that is. Let's say our slider that we're going to be creating, uh, we want it to look something like this. Uh, I just laid it horizontally, but uh, you can imagine the same problem is going to happen when, it, when you're sliding vertically. Uh, we're going to have a big slider bar here that we're going to be grabbing and sliding up and down like so. Um, so the full range of motion we want is going to be defined from the starting location all the way to the end. But the way that the code is currently written, the slider will not slide like this. It's not going to go from this location all the way down to this location. The rendering code always causes our slider bar here, the part that we grab and slide around, to be drawn such that half of it is to the left of the current location and half of it is to the right. So we'd get something like this. And then when we slide to the far right side, it would go all the way down to this location. So you'll see that half the slider is actually covering our uh, buttons that we uh, want to be able to still click on. This isn't the behavior we want. We want to somehow constrain the slider bar such that it can only slide up to this location and down to this location. So the new implementation of the slider bar is going to change the full range of motion to be only this, such that 
when we slide the slider bar, you'll notice that middle part now will line up so that um, it's right here, and half of this bar is going to end up being at the original location that we wanted. And then when we slide down to the very end on the other side, the middle of the location of the bar is going to end up being over here, such that when we render it, the end of it is going to be at the full length of the slider uh, bar here. So this is the change that we're going to make. It's only a slight change, but uh, the numerical calculations and everything else are still going to work exactly the same way. The only real difference is we're going to define this new minimum and maximum range for the slider so that when we're sliding, we can constrain how far this bar can go. Now, instead of asking you to uh, type in the changes that I've made, because this was my mistake, what I'm doing is I'm providing to you the source code for the slider class. You can just take it, cut and paste it directly into your uh, game engine under the object lib, and all the changes will take place. So I'm just going to do that right here. We're going to replace the GUI slider.cpp, and we're going to replace the GUI slider.h. Now let's go take a look at the differences. You'll notice right away that the GUI slider has a different constructor. Um, we pass in the ID, position, and size, but now there's something here called pixel inset. That pixel inset is how many pixels we want to define as being the size from here all the way to the middle of the slider bar. So that's the definition of the pixel inset. It doesn't matter if it's horizontal or vertical, pixel inset is just this distance here. The other thing we have here is we have a slider bar offset, and this guy is responsible for telling us how much of an offset vertically we want this bar to be with respect to the slider. Because we may have a button that is larger than the actual slider bar, for instance, something like this, we will want to give it uh, a negative offset so that it overhangs a little beyond the slider region here so that when we render it, it renders sort of centered rather than rendering like this on the screen and then having this large overhang over the top. If that's something you want, you can just set the uh, slider offset to be zero and it'll render like this. But if you give it an offset, then you can center it about your bar and it'll still look according to how maybe you want to make it look. And we'll be using this offset to correct the way that the sliders work inside of the options menu. Because you'll remember there we had those triangle shaped uh, bars that we can grab to change the settings and those ones do overhang the actual sliding region. So we need that offset uh, value. But for the slider bar for the list box we may not need to use the offset because the actual slider bar part that we're going to be grabbing is going to be probably the same size as the slider region. So you, you may not need to offset it. The other changes that you'll notice inside of the GUI slider class are, um, let's go inside of the constructor here. You'll notice that we're defining the position, the size, as well as the hot size, but we're no longer using the hot uh, offset. Um, by definition, our GUI control will have uh, hot size, position, hot offset. This value here, we're no longer using inside of the GUI slider. It's been eliminated and replaced with this pixel inset value. Also, because we're passing in this pixel inset value inside of the constructor, now, after doing all these checks here, we can go in and calculate the full range of motion of our slider right inside of the constructor. Uh, and because we can do that using this minimum and maximum range, we know exactly how large this M and B value need to be so that our slider works, and we can set the value of our slider immediately uh, inside of the constructor. Before, we couldn't do this until we passed in assigned texture into here and assigned a specific texture for the slider bar. Then using that slider bar, we were able to, uh, at the bottom here, calculate the M and B value. All of that code has now been moved inside of the constructor because the inset value is responsible for telling us how big that slider bar is going to be. And that's going to determine how far the slider is able to move. 
The other things that we changed in here um, are, let's just go through here, take a look. All this stuff is the same. Here, check hotspots. Um, we use the pixel offset or pixel inset value here anytime we're checking to see uh, whether the mouse is over top of our slider region and then deciding whether uh, we are actually supposed to highlight something or not. So if this is the case, we're now using the pixel inset value here. We need to offset the mouse position by that pixel inset value to allow for the correct calculations, both for horizontal sliders as well as vertical ones as well. You'll notice it's down here. The last thing that I changed was inside of the render function, and that's located right here. Uh, you'll notice that the pixel inset value shows up once again, uh, this time inside of the X coordinate when we're rendering the objects to the screen, and as well as for the Y coordinate when we're going vertically down here. Oh, uh, here we are using the hot offset. Oh, right, right. Um, I forgot that uh, the hot offset originally was being set um, up here after we're doing the hot size uh, assignment based on the size value that gets passed in here. The pixel offset, or sorry, the pixel inset value now is not getting saved inside of the hot offset. Instead, what we're doing is down here, we calculate the minimum and maximum range, and this is where the hot spot offset comes into play. So here we're setting it and then inside of the render function down below we are actually using that value inside of here. So the calculations all get done inside of the constructor now uh, to sort of streamline the process of getting the slider uh, ready to be rendered to the screen. So those are the changes that needed to be made for the slider. Um, you can go and just cut and paste those guys into your code and once you have that You'll notice that if you try to build in your project, you'll notice you will get some errors. And the reason for this is because we changed the constructor for the GUI slider. So we need to go back and change the way that we uh, initialize all of our sliders to take into consideration this new constructor. And then once we do that, we can go ahead and start working with the new GUI control, which is the GUI list. Let's go and fix these, and then we can start up on our new GUI control. Okay, so for this first GUI slider, uh, first parameter is ID, we're going to leave that the same. Position is the same, size is the same. The next guy here is the pixel inset. Now for this specific slider, um, the bar itself that we're going to be moving is about um, 34 pixels, I think, wide. So half of that is 17. And the vertical pixel offset that we want to have is about minus 8, so we're just going to type in minus 8 here. And the other values are the same, so we can just leave them as they are. Let's just copy this, and let's take a look here at the next guy. This slider has the same difficulties, so we're just going to replace this with the following, 17 and minus 8, and Over here, we have mouse sensitivity, 17 and minus 8. Here, the pause, 17 minus 8. And finally, uh, the pause options, mouse sensitivity. Replace this guy with 17 and minus 8. Let's go and compile and build. Okay, now let's just test this out, make sure our sliders still work. Sure enough, they do, so we can just slide them around, make sure everything is fine. Once they're working perfectly well, uh, we can go in now and start implementing the uh, new GUI control, which is our list box.